Sup guys, the name is Rana Dragnail and welcome to Seduce Me, My Princess. So this is Eric's epilogue and I completely forgot that Michaela released this a couple of days ago. And oh my goodness, this is big. Ah, oh my god, I can't. So I think this epilogue will be awesome. So with that, let's start. Name. When you're dating someone, you expect surprises. Depending on who you're dating, the surprises can range from a new habit they may have or something that they may change how you see them. When it comes to dating a demon, the possibilities become endless. That's right, I was in love with a demon. The many surprises he showed me included him being an incubus, him having tentacle powers. Again, why the tentacles? Michaela, what were you thinking? Okay. And him being an ex-noble from a large expanding kingdom. I didn't think anything could take the cake on top of those things. I was wrong. I found myself dressed to the nines, sitting in my fiancé's luxury car as we drove into the city of Chicago. I didn't wear fancy clothes often, so feeling the, labric the lavish fabrics of the gown I was wearing against my skin was almost uncomfortable. Still, I had to admit, when I saw myself in the mirror, I was floored at how I looked. I was in a beautifully designed red and black dress with matching heels and jeweled accessories. I still would never know how Eric was able to attain it all, but he gifted the gown, the shoes, and the jewelry to me with a simple smile. A part of me knew that he had made the dress by hand. He owned a custom suit shop and had access to the finest fabrics in the city. His skill wasn't limited to suits, however. He could make anything that was deemed as formal wear. As for the jewelry, the shoes and jewelry, I couldn't figure it out and had decided to let it go. The drive into the city became one filled with curiosity. Why did I have to be dressed up? Where exactly were we going? Eric? Yes, my princess? Oh my god! Look at him! Look at him! He's so fancy dressed! I... Yes! Yes! Where are we going? A chuckle escaped Eric's lips as he continued to drive into the night. I told you, it's a surprise. A surprise that requires me to dress up like I'm going to a prom? Not a prom, exactly. Eric. Eric's smile grew as he lowered a hand from the wheel and took a gentle hold of mine, bringing it to his lips and laying a butterfly kiss over it. I promise you will enjoy yourself. You have my word. I stared at Eric. A small blush adorning my face as its gentle words and kiss. Giving up at last, I nodded and simply let it, him guide f us further into the heart of the city. I f didn't even mention that the artist changed and the art style has changed and he looks so cute. Either, either art style, it's so cute. And yeah. Chicago was a beautiful city, especially at night. The lights that illuminated the streets and buildings were a grand sight to behold, and the lively aura of the night's energy that filled every alley and sidewalk was simply enchanting. You could take me out of Chicago, but you can never take the love of Chicago, Chicago out of me. To my surprise, the traffic towards our destination was almost non-existent. We were in the richest part of Chicago, and at last we arrived at our destination, one that took me completely off guard. The outside looked like a regular business building, at the very top of the tower with a large sign that said the gateway in bright yellow colors. Something about it stood out, somehow, which made me curious. What was in store in this place? Eric led me out of the car, opening my door for me and escorted me out with a gentle hand. As he closed the door behind me, a man dressed in a bellboy suit rushed up to Eric and held out his hands. Eric dug his hands into his in his tuxedo pocket and finally took out a small white envelope, passing it and his car keys to the bellboy. The bellboy took the items and quickly rushed into the driver's side of the car, driving it off like a valet. I watched the car he head into a nearby parking lot as I unconsciously took Eric's arm. As I turned back to him, I could tell that I was in for more surprises. He handed me a mask and silently instructed me to put it on as we walked up the steps to the door. It fit like a glove. I wanted- We're in a masquerade? I want to see my mask. 
the, I've always wanted to go to a masquerade ball. It's awesome. A pair of bellboys opened the door for Eric and me, revealing a lavish lobby with a single large pedestal platform in the middle of the room. Stepping up to it, we were stopped by a large woman in a dress suit. Invitation? Oh. I looked at Eric, watching him take out a golden slip of paper from his pocket and pass it to the woman. The guard looked over the parchment before nodding to Eric and stepping away from our path to the pedestal. Where on earth were we going? I remained silent still as we stepped up to the platform and settled in the middle of it, Eric guiding us to stop and stay in place. Eric nodded to the guard, who simply nodded back and waved her hand in the air. As she did, the pedestal beneath us suddenly shifted and began to rise into the air. Whoa! I gripped Eric tightly as the platform beneath us ascended through the building. All around us were sights of pictures and diamond chandeliers. What, whatever this was, I could tell this was by no means a regular event. A regular event. When we reached the top floor, or what I assumed to be the top floor, we were greeted by a pair of women in waitress suits, bowing us in res- bowing to us in respect. As their burnt tail feathers and pure black eyes presented themselves to me, I knew that this was a demon party. Fancy music! The doors opened to a large ballroom, one that didn't seem to fit the inside of a suit room, suite room. All around were couples and groups mingling and dancing elegantly to the sound of Victorian style orchestral music. I was astonished even as I was led by in by Eric. Everyone was dressed in modern formal wear, with a range of dresses and tuxedos. It was almost dizzying how much the aged music clashed with the modern fashion of the patrons. Yet I couldn't tear my eyes away from the sight of the guests. Wow. Welcome to a small taste of the demon world, my princess. The guests were all demons, some with horns, some with tails, and the rest were with an assorted of different looks. It was a cult conglomerate of people and I felt a bit out of place as someone who looked obviously human. I want to see Eric in his mask. Why can't I see Eric in his mask, man? As we stepped further into the space, a voice chirped out. Eric, my boy! Come fly over here, will you? Oh. I looked over to see a bird man with a polished tuxedo wave us over with a very handsome gentleman with mouse ears on his arm. Despite the nerves running through my system, Eric and I walked over. As Eric bowed his head, I quickly curtsied. For some reason, the way the birdman carried himself made him seem like a prince. I was in awe of his gorgeous tail feathers and beak, ascended by the lavish suit he wore. Connor, you look splendid. I assume you approve of your tuxedo? Approve? I absolutely love it! Ricardo here won't let go of me because of it. <laughs> so he made that for... Connor. Okay. I looked over at the mouse man, who am I assumed to be Ricardo, as he smiled coyly and hugged Connor's arm tight, nodding in agreement of Connor's words. I smiled a bit as Eric laughed. Okay, so Connor's the bird, and Ricardo, Ricardo is the mouse. Very good. Well, thank you for inviting us to your anniversary celebration. It is an honor to be in such company. Aw, they're together. That's so cute. Nonsense. Thank you for attending. As the son of the most powerful demon in the Abyssal Plains, it's only proper to invite you regardless. My only regret is not inviting your brothers. I must seem so rude. I think Sam wouldn't want to come because he's not that type of person to be partying. I can pretty tell. Eric waved his hand dismissively. Think nothing of it. We actually denounced our titles when we came to this world. You don't say. Well, good on you. You do such fabulous work as a designer here. It's no wonder that your suit shop is unmatched. Owns a suit shop. That's so nice. Connor finally turned his head to me and cocked it in curiosity. I felt a bit small under his gaze, but smiled respectfully back. Respectfully back. And who might this lovely lady be? A human? Eric nodded and lifted my hand to his lips, kissing it respectfully before our conversation partners. This is my wonderful princess. I asked her to accompany me tonight to show her how elegant a demon ball can be. Well, I feel honored to be your princess, as always. 
how marvelous. I rarely get to meet humans. It is an absolute delight to meet you. Connor held out his hand towards me, making me place my hand in it out of manners. Instead of kissing my hand, he lifted it to, be to his beak and bent. Blah. Why can't I read? He lifted it to his beak and very gently nipped a couple t times at the back of it, making me giggle a bit. It's a pleasure to meet you, too. Connor released my hand and smiled at me before looking back at Eric. Well, Eric, princess, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. Please enjoy the ball. Dance and eat as much as you like. We shall. Thank you. With that, Eric and I walked away from Connor and Ricardo, both of whom were waving at us before turning to find new conversation partners. So this is a demon ball? Yes, princess. You've been curious about what life was like for me in the demon world, yes? I nodded. I was indeed curious about Eric's life in the demon world, but I didn't expect him to give me an experience. This was completely out of the blue. Eric gestured to the room, where the couples on the dance floor were waltzing in sync. It was mesmerizing. Well, this is a perfect representation of how a demon royal celebrated. We had elegant balls filled with dancing and food, and they would only end when the sun came up. Really? I thought the demon world was like the Dark Ages? This seemed like a fairy tale ball, but not really medieval. Eric chuckled and walked with me around the dance floor, continuing his explanation. <laughs> the demon world may be stuck in the Dark Ages. But we do take inspiration from the human world. Your fairy tales inspired our celebrations. I couldn't stop staring at the dancers and the demons in the room. There were so many people dressed up like royalty that I felt almost underdressed. There were some glances my way, but none with ill intent. It was probably natural, since I was a human in a room full of demons. Slyly, Eric led me onto the dance floor and began to waltz with me to the music. We remained outside of the crowd, dancing to our own beat and sways at the, as the rest of the dancers kept in time and step with the synchronized dancing. So, instead of getting phones and computers, you got balls and dresses? <laughs> you are correct. The demon world has no need for computers or phones, but new traditions of celebration are always welcomed. No raves or clubs? Too human for our tastes. No light shows or DJs? That would require electricity, my princess, which we don't care to use. To us, it's a waste of energy. I pursed my lips at Eric as he slowly began to ease us into the crowd. I barely noticed the dancers moving aside and stopping their dances to stare at us as I locked eyes with Eric, continuing the conversation. Do demons have balls often? Unfortunately, no. Hosting celebrations take a large amount of resources, so we save balls for only the most grand of occasions. Like birthdays? Demons don't celebrate birthdays, princess. However, we celebrate the peaceful uniting of kingdoms or the crowning of a new ruler. I became fascinated even as Eric began to twirl me around and add elaborate steps into the dance between us. We both focused on each other as we let the world around us fade into a blurred outline of people and decor. However, the human world has provided demons here the means to celebrate many more things. Like Connor's anniversary? Eric nodded and dipped me for a moment, staring deep into my eyes. Exactly. Cute! Oh, is that his mask? That's so cool! I like it! It has a little rose on it! I held on to Eric, mesmerized in his lovely purple eyes. I squeezed his hand gently and caused him to lift me back up and hold me close in a loving embrace. And one day, I would love to hold an elegant ball for our union. Yay. Eric. My face began to glow a soft rosy red as I smiled up at my prince. I loved him with every ounce of my being, and a fairy tale wedding and ball seemed like a perfect way to celebrate. I stretched up on my toes and kissed Eric ever so gently before pulling away with a giggle. I would love that. Eric stared at me in surprise for a moment before chuckling and nuzzling his head against mine, a playful but loving smirk against his lips. My beautiful princess, I am yours forever. And I am yours, my Prince Charming. And the night became one of the fairy tale dancing and a seemingly happy happy ever after for me and my demon prince. That was Eric's epilogue. Oh my that 
this was, was really, really cute. I really loved it. Okay, um, just the credits. So this was by Michaela Laws. The art is by Camille, Michaela, Beryl, and Alexis. Music by Christopher Escalante. And he is also Eric. Yes. Thank you, Christopher, for bringing, li bringing life to me. Because you voice Eric so well. So good. Brendan is con- Oh! Pay attention to that name, because that name will be important later. Anyways, and Michaela was that demon guard. Oh, okay. Alright then. Okay, so... That's it for this episode. The next video will start Sam's route. I promise you. So, anyways... If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Oh! I completely didn't realize the the hashtag at the bottom. Hashtag Ubatus. Hashtag Ubatus for the win. Woo. Okay. But anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more of my videos, then please click, click subscri subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.